party wagon and hold on to your pizza. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Epic Tales from the Sewers. I am your host, Justin. With me is my my co-host, Mr. Eric Will. Say hi, doing Eric. Hey, how y'all doing today? <laughs> now, today we have a very special guest. Uh, today's guest I was lucky enough to meet recently at C2E2 at this past August in Chicago. I happened across this table, and I was drawn in by the giant picture of Captain Jean-Luc Picard in the artwork that I recognized from The Mirror War, which I got as a free comic on Free Comic Book Day. And it was an issue that um, I grabbed just a while back. Um, I was then looking through the book, and I saw that he had actually recreated the first two full pages from The Last Ronin. So while my head was spinning, I immediately took a picture and sent it to Eric, right? <laughs> but our guest today is the very same artist that I met, Mr. Gavin Smith. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to the show, All yeah, About Turtles. So, yeah. you know... Um, like I said, I, I was just so impressed um, looking through your art book. Like one of the things that stands out specifically about your art style is that your your turtles all had pupils. Yes. And it's something that you don't normally see. And it was just so refreshing. I'm like, this is cool, man. I like the way that they look. It's like a cross between like the movie style turtles and and, um, you know, just like the IDW style. But it, it's such a fresh take. And I really liked it. Well, I, I really appreciate that. Like I, I like uh, drawing them with the eyes, because, like, I think, uh, I, I was kind of having this discussion with a friend of mine earlier about turtles, and, uh, you know, he, he has, like, I, I'm not gonna get too blue here, but, like, he, he has, you this, can, it's all right, <laughs> oh, okay, well, like, he has this theory that, like, people identify with characters, uh, if you either, A, want to be them, or, two, you want to sleep with them, Okay. And, um, and I, I don't necessarily totally agree with that, but like I, I think, and and you know, he doesn't see him. He was telling me he wasn't a Turtles fan because he doesn't see himself. He can't identify as a Ninja Turtle. And I was like, well, I can identify as a Ninja Turtle, a being a brother, and their like unique personalities. So like, and, and with that, like that's why I do like drawing their eyes because I feel like each turtle has their own distinct personality, and I like to draw that through them uh, through their eyes you know as well as their body language in general it, it, yeah because you you do lose a lot in the translation like when you see sure. like a, a wolverine or a batman or something like that and it sure looks cool when you're posing right. but you can't usually see where they're looking right and in batman that's like part of the design but it's like also it's it's kind of like you know shorthand for you know you know, it's just the mystique of what a mask is and, and such I, so I, th I think it can work with with you know, don't get me wrong, I don't mind the blank eyes. Like, whenever I draw Last Ronin uh, stuff, like commissions or uh, the variant cover I got coming out, we'll talk about it later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll uh, like, you know, I, I don't mind drawing the blank eye because, like, it's specifically that turtle. It's Mike. It's, it's, I don't it's think spoilers. he has pupils um, anywhere in, in that series. Not in the series. Yeah. You know, like, I, I think he, uh, pro I think only when he's unmasked and like in the sewer we're talking to april or something like that um or, or you know his hideout. might be the and flashback to when um like the other turtles were talking to him at the end of that first they definitely issue. have pupils mm -hmm. whenever yeah uh bishop draws them um yep. but yeah but anyway I, I i like doing it because you know it does give them a little bit more of an identity uh rather than um uh, just the blank guys all around because then they can kind of get lost in each other yeah, and, and um, I mean in the in the recent books too, and in, in of, of which you have uh, just posted a uh, cover for one thirty four, yes. right? Yes. Where um, you know there's a triceraton and and uh, it's it's on the cover. It's kind of got like this X Men Days of Future Past vibe yeah. going on. But but um, Sophie Campbell started that out where they had pupils, and you know each of them had they all they all kind of had like brown eyes too. And I was like, oh, you know, I always thought that was kind of a missed opportunity where it's like. They could mm -hmm. do something different with each of them and give them different color eyes, but right. you know they didn't. And I'm, I always wondered why. I, I'll have to ask her if I ever get to talk to her. Yeah. So. Tell the 2012 you. turtles actually have had the different color eyes. Like they I do. Raphael, yeah. Yeah, because Raphael has like the red eyes and all that other stuff with the pupils and stuff. I I thought he had like green or something because Donnie has brown. Yeah, eyes. yeah green, green, green. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, as I'm looking right now, the two seven two thousand and seven turtles, this one right here. Yep. Oh yeah, they, yep. yeah. They had pupils and stuff. Dude, that's a great movie. Uh, like, I, I like to see was. still like draw like the mask, like it's actual eye holes, like yeah. very crudely cut out, so uh, that you can still see a little green around them, and then you see like the eyelids and stuff like that okay. as well. So. Like that, that the mask doesn't just perfectly form to be perfectly honest. shape over their eyes. Yeah, right. and I, I remember that as a kid having um, having like those things, and I think my mom sewed one and all that, and she had to sew up around the eyes, and it was just so cumbersome. I'm like, this kind of sucks, <laughs> you know. So I, I could see like the the turtles just like cutting something, and it and it would be like jagged or whatever, like graph usually is. It makes much more sense than having something that's like finely tooled and sewn around. Right. It's like yeah, that kind of gives like a weird sort of puffy vibe to it. Right. So. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that one. It, it just it doesn't quite make much sense, you know. Yeah, but, maybe um, Donnie would. Maybe, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, if if that's if that's like an aspect of his uh, or an effect of his uh, personality, I could I could see that for sure. Yeah. You know, or Mikey <laughs> would have something or, funny, or yeah. or maybe Leo, Leo, because he's a little more uptight than the rest of them too. He probably want that void distraction. Well, probably those um, two of any of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's. Yeah, I could see that as well because maybe he would want it to like be impressive to Splinter or something along those sure. lines. Yeah, I, I could see that. Well, let's let's go back to the beginning. When sure. when did you start uh, getting interested in turtles? Is this is this a new thing for you? Were you interested from all. when you were a kid? Or uh, yeah, I, I was a uh, diehard turtles fan as a kid. Like I remember, I saw the 1990 movie in theaters, and I was probably four. Oh, wow. Um, nice. Yeah. So I, I remember my dad took me to see that uh, very vividly. And, you know, the first first word out of a turtle's mouth was damn, you know, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, OK. Because I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd grown up on the cartoon as well. So I knew the cartoon. But that first movie hit and I was I, I was obsessed. You know, it, it was just stuck mm -hmm. with me and like it, you know, it, it still holds up funny, funny enough when I got <laughs> offered my first turtles cover. I happened to be rewatching the movie. No kidding. I swear to God. Like, I, I couldn't make it up. Like, I ran up to my wife and I was like, you'll never guess what just happened. And she's like, what? And I told her. And she's like, wait, aren't you downstairs watching that right now? And I was <laughs> like, yeah. So that was pretty funny. And uh, you, you'd been working at IDW at that point, right? Yeah. So I, I've been with IDW uh, working with them about little over uh probably about 15 16 months doing stuff for them um so that started with uh I, i've been in contact with, with them for a while and it was always just sort of uh let's wait and let's find out let's see so um uh, you know if something came up i was busy or vice versa um and uh or they just didn't have anything at the time but i, I had a good relationship with some editors there and then finally, the, uh, the chance to work on Star Trek popped up, and I, I jumped at it. It was a big series, so I just finished up doing eight issues, which took me a full year to do. Um, How many pages do you have to do for your interiors? Like, is it 22 pages? It's 20 pages. 20, 20? page issues, yeah. So, uh, But with Star Trek, it's, it's, it's a lot because it's... Uh, uh, dialogue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there, it's <laughs> funny because, like, ever since I've been working with turtles it's kind of the same uh same thing where they have to get approval from nickelodeon but with star trek they have to get approval from cbs yep. and hmm. uh those people and it's a much more delayed process with star trek because they only meet once a week and i found that nickelodeon whenever the, for the covers that i've done for turtles i've gotten back like super quick uh oh, which great. is nice uh but like yeah, and and Star Trek is you know everything has to look like some like like who they are like you know uh, Picard has to look like Patrick Stewart you know, the Enterprise has to look like the Enterprise etc. So uh, that that process has been it takes a little longer. So they usually give me about six seven weeks to do an issue of Star Trek. What kind of reference materials do you use for something like that? I Google. I just Google. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> Google, Google, but like also like uh, all of Next Gen. Might not be on there anymore, but all of Next Gen was on Netflix. Yeah, it was. Yep. Screenshotting a lot. Uh, from there, I ended up buying my own uh, uh, diecast Enterprise. Like oh, that's small perfect. one. So I was taking my own reference. 
Like, you can't really tell, but it's, it's right. Hold on. There. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right next to the old Star Wars uh, record tote. Uh, oh, that's so, fun. Yeah, so I... Uh, I have all the Hallmark ornaments. Oh, yeah. Right, those. So I had been collecting those for years. So I, I finally got the Enterprise D. You know, oh, okay. and, and that was like the hard one to find for me. But I mean, I've well, got like all the ships pretty much. Well, the funny thing is, I, I so the, the, the die cast when I got, um, I had to get specifically the Mirror uh, Universe one that J.K. Woodward designed for the series, uh, which is great that they made a uh, cast of it. But the, um, and they, and they even like painted the, uh, Terran logo stuff on it as well, which was cool. But like, it's specifically the Enterprise D from All Good Things, the last episode of Next Gen. Very cool. So like, it's not the regular Enterprise. Uh, it's like got a different, uh, thingy. Yeah, it's pre generation. Uh, it's like, yeah. like, 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 like this, not yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, that's cool. I'm sure I'm going to get like, yelled at by some star trek oh yeah no i mean that like because like i don't remember what the the thing is called there's certain things you can't do with with like star trek fans like Uh you can't you can't put a mechanical component in the wrong place they will i know you on oh i know i've I've seen the reviews (laughs) ncsdf you know it's like oh okay so it's like because i'm in like like some trek groups and i'm like i'm I'm kind of a nerdy guy you know i like stuff and i like minutia and i'm like oh do you know who directed this episode that's like how nerdy i get or i'm like oh did you know they're playing this song you know but they're like well actually did you know there's only three pieces of the four uh the forward and aft nacelles and and i'm like right yes yeah you know i'm like (laughs) I'm like, you lost me. I also don't know how many pips a lieutenant has or how many pips. I, I know that. That's cool. You know, it's like, or, okay, no, so four lieutenant, for a captain. No, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, four is for a captain. Three for a lieutenant, but I think it's... See, I, I two, didn't know until you told me. Two gold, one black. I don't know. Something to that effect. Yeah, two yeah, gold, so one I, black I, lieutenant. I'm like, I I don't know. I, I lost out on that Like when you know, uh, was it yeah. Star Wars uh, Trivial Pursuit came out. And my friend just schooled us. He's like, "Oh, you don't know how how many uh, stars Grand Moff Tarkin has." I'm like, "No, nope, see, I, and don't. I might even be wrong on that too, because like, and I'm sure like I'm gonna hear about it at some point, like, because I like if there was like one time. I mean, like, it, it's funny, and like making comics is just funny in general because like there's uh, and th- this is something that came up in a re- in a review, and I kind of got roasted on Twitter by like a small Star Trek community. I was like, whatever. I don't uh, but but like there was You're like something you guys want to see my check? That's yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of yeah. It's I mean hey, this is my house, so you know. Yeah. Um, the, the the gist of it was like I drew something in the beginning of issue two, and then it showed up. The same ship showed up later at the end of issue four, and I had completely like biffed the ship somehow, and like. And, like, that's the only two times this one particular ship showed up in the whole series, eight issues. Um, and, like, someone, like, started, like, roasting me about it on Twitter. And I was like, dude, you got to realize that's, like, eight, nine weeks of my life that I didn't draw this thing. Like, so it's, like, I drew it, and it's only in one panel in each issue. So it looks like I drew it in one panel in issue two at the beginning of the issue and then go through finish up issue two, finish up all of issue three, get through most of issue four to get to that one panel again. And it's like, that's like nine. Who's to say they didn't retrofit it? I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what happened. It's funny. It's that's comics though. That's showbiz. That's like the Simpsons where it's like, how come when itchy is using scratchy as a xylophone, you could clearly see him hitting the same bones, but he made a different yeah. sound. They're like, don't you people have lives? Yeah. Like there was literally <laughs> like, I almost like, I, I, I censored myself, but I almost replied with the gif is like, well, I hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Yeah, like, exactly. which is the, the same scene that you're referencing. Yeah. So yeah. Like, Oh man. Like what's the expectation? It's like, Oh, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, we're, we're right? not like a, a million dollar production company like Paramount no. who doesn't make mistakes. Right. Oh wait, have you seen the first Star Trek series? <laughs> you know, it's like, it, you know, I don't right. know. I, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's crazy. It happens. It's all good. And, um, 
and we'll we'll just continue briefly on the, sure. the Star Trek. You you had told me a story about um a uh, actor that was on Star Trek that uh, actually stopped to look at some of your artwork. Yeah. Would you mind uh, just uh, telling us about uh, uh I can't your your Brady? I'm not I'm not great at it, but like I uh, you know there was um I was uh on uh at the Indiana uh Comic Con, which is about five minutes from my house. I live in Indianapolis, so um. I was there and I was, uh, you know, I was actually working on pages at the show because it was a local show. So like, I wasn't like going all out for it. I show up, showed up with my banner and just, you know, a couple portfolios and just sitting there working. And I look up and there's Quark and I just kind of, Hey, you know, just what's going on. And we got to talk a little bit. He like, you know, I gave him a copy of, and it was literally like about a week after the first issue of mirror war came out. So, uh, uh, I gave him a copy, signed it for him. And then, uh, he took a picture with my banner and stuff and he sent it to, uh, uh, you know, they all hang the out. cast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, that's what he told me. He's like, I'm sending this to Frakes. I'm sending this to Marina. And I was like, this is wild. So, uh, apparently they've seen it and I, I've yet to meet anybody else from Trek yet, but I know there's a couple shows coming up. Uh, I swear, like by there. by a week or two weeks, you missed Freaks because he was there. Uh, he was there at Fan Expo before C two E two, and it was two weeks. Prior yeah, you well, I, I was at the Fan Expo in Dallas, and uh, uh, the way Fan Expo has their uh, guest artists set up, it's almost like a ring around Artist Alley. So, like, there's the, oh, I don't, I don't want to call them amateur artists, but like the the not, uh, I guess not published artists, uh, up and coming. Like, I guess yeah, so. Yeah, that's, like that's, like a, you know what? That's more, very more generous like the, not, of you, the, not the people not getting yeah, published by like I the mean, big like seven or eight co- companies that exist. Yeah. So like you know the but like so so we're on the outside wall and there's Artist Alley, but behind artists, uh, behind our uh, ring, I guess like a horseshoe, uh, is a curtain, and that's kind of where they uh, move the celebrity. I should probably shouldn't tell it whatever uh, but like oh, it's, it's, where they, it's where they like move the celebrities around to get them to like the, you know the the panel stages and stuff like that um and uh my buddy josh hickson uh we were sitting by each other's me sue lee josh hickson uh we're, we're all hanging out all weekend but like josh went behind the curtain to take a break and he just kind of pops back his head his bed back he's like hey gavin you just missed your boys <laughs> it's like data and Baker <laughs> just walked by and i was like oh so yeah they didn't get a chance but oh well oh man they're they're gonna love your stuff when they yeah. see it it's it, I, I mean like, i think i'll meet them in columbus in december oh, cool. yeah that's, uh, that's, that's in your area yeah. yeah where you at uh when when in columbus uh when? columbus in uh ohio uh yeah where when uh december first week of december december nice. 2nd and 4th. first week of december all right you got time I'll, yeah i got plenty of time yeah, yeah, yeah. um it's gonna be a good show where, you, where, where's it going to be at? Because that's like that's like literally forty five minutes away from me. Oh, I think I think at the convention center. It's Galaxy Con. Okay, Galaxy Con. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, All right, I'll there. I'll talk to my wife. We could work yeah. something out. That sounds great. <laughs> that's that's gonna be really. And I, cool. I don't know. They he, they, might, they might be in. I don't know. I'll also be at the Cincinnati show in September as well. So actually, it's this month. I'll be there in a couple weeks. Wow, oh, oh, we're there yeah. already, huh? Yeah. That's crazy. We were just talking to some folks uh, maybe a couple weeks ago about uh, Granite State, which is uh, happening, I think, next week. Yeah. So, you know, or or it's already happened if you're listening to this later, but that's fine. <laughs> you know, so we, we just know it's it's supposed to be great. And, uh, you know, we're uh, we're looking forward to that one. But, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So um, we, we already asked. So you've got a history with turtles. What, what right. did you get your start um with uh collecting turtles were were you collecting like the uh, action figures were you into the comics um yeah yes and yes um i i mean i I was too young to get the original eastman laird comics uh by the time uh i was i think aware that they existed they were probably well done at the moment so um but i remember getting like the archie issues oh yeah uh, like that were coming out uh, but I was also getting like yeah a lot of the figurines and you know watching the cartoon and stuff and you know watching the movies as they came out so I, I saw mm-hmm. every single Turtles movie in the theater even three, uh, <laughs> which you know has its moments. Um, I, I remember seeing like the uh, 
the 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 preview for it and he's like you were expecting the adams family and i was like oh wow i gotta see this and i just yeah. never got to see it in in the theater yeah you know, and I, I wanted to i just never we had, had the chance we had a small theater so it was only like two movies at a time uh in my hometown i remember i think movies were a buck 50 back then yeah yeah the dollar Jesus 50 movies. Christ, i sound yeah like i remember person. seeing like um oh man uh stop or my mom will shoot or something yeah. like that one of those and it's like <laughs> Probably around the same time, you know, maybe a little bit after that, but yeah, you know, like just that's the type of movie that you would see there. It's like, yeah, you're like, well, yeah. I think we saw like Dragonheart, you know, sure, yeah. Oh my cool. gosh, Dragonheart, I haven't seen that in a while, right? Yeah. Mm -mm. That's pretty cool. But David but, Tulis is in that, so that means nothing other than just you know, he's pretty good, so, yeah. And he was just on Sandman, I guess that's why I was oh, okay. Him, so, nice. you know. Um, yeah, I, w I was big on the Archie ones myself. That's yeah. actually what, what hooked me on uh, the Turtles. I, but it was funny because, like, I have, like, I, I was kidding them, but I would I was never, like, collecting them regularly because we had, uh, back then, we had this little drugstore. Uh, I, I grew up in this small town called Peru, Indiana, uh, Circus City, capital of the world. Uh, amateur Circus City, capital of the world. Anyway, uh, there's a little drugstore called Hooks that I would go in to, or like a Kroger, whenever my mom grocery stopped, and they'd have comics on the magazine rack still. Uh, so I was like, you know, anytime my parents were running errands, I'd find a way to get to the magazine stand. Oh, yeah. And, or if, you know, they went shopping, uh, came to Indianapolis and did some shopping or something, I'd have them drop me off at Borders and I'd go to the, the comic section and I'd sit there for hours and just read. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's how I read crisis on infinite earth first time. oh yes that's really yeah. bad uh um so we'll come back to that one so. sure yeah <laughs> um but but it's just like like i i've always been a big comics guy so like i'd, I'd want to read and digest as much as possible um so yeah I, i'd read, read a lot of those and uh then i kind of i guess fell out of comics i guess when i was like in junior high and high school his rock and roll and girls got in the way so oh yeah so <laughs> i mean we, I mean, can, still drawing we, can, stuff. we yeah. can all relate to that yeah. yes I mean, absolutely yeah, yeah. so yeah. uh i mean i'd still be wearing my batman shirt in the mosh pit at a metallica concert right. but you know it's like you know I, we didn't really have many turtle shirts back then but, right but like I, it, I totally get it there was like maybe like one kid in my high school that i could talk about comics with because i'd still do the same thing in high school whenever like you know we'd go to visit grandma or something like that and on the way back my mom would stop in Indianapolis. i'd still go to borders and stuff and i'd still go look read comics um and uh so but uh, yeah I didn't, like collecting comics and liking this stuff wasn't cool in 2000, oh, 2000, yeah. 2000, 2004. Um, it just wasn't. <laughs> Dude, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> cool in 96 through 99 either. Yeah. So yeah. I'll tell yeah. <laughs> you. Know. It was fine for me to like it, you know, as a up until like about till I got to junior high. And then it actually like, may not be cool now there. that I think about it too. So I, but, but it's, but it's literally, yeah, it's, it's pop culture now. I mean, it is, mm -hmm. it is the, Entertain like every you know all, all TV shows and movies are based on this shit that we've liked and grew like, up we're all, like in, and almost were like ashamed of because like this, this is not stuff people liked when we were growing up. Yeah, Marvel, um, DC, right. all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's it's wild to see like this revisionist history of people saying how much they love this stuff as a kid, uh, um, and yeah. it's just like I I don't believe you. <laughs> oh no! I, I used to get I used to get ripped on. They're like, "Oh, you uh, like the Ninja Turtles? I gotta call you Splinter." I'm like, "Right, really? like that's dumb, but cool." Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, all right. So it's funny. <laughs> it's whatever. Um, but yeah, it's uh... anyway. I kind of went off on a tangent there. <laughs> it's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go back to something that you yeah, said yeah, here. yeah. Um, so you you mentioned uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. And sure. I. I feel like if there's an influence on your work, it has to be George Perez. Perez is huge, actually. Because when I right, see right your artwork, me, it's so close. It's just like, it looks like his style. There's yeah. That's that's a Perez right there. That's oh, wow. A, that's a Perez Kid Flash. Oh, beautiful. It's, yeah, so I'm, I'm a big uh, Perez guy. I love Perez's work. Uh, I, I think I most of our like... listeners probably know George Perez from yeah. uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, from Crisis on Infinite Earths. But I mean, like he's 
one half of the Done creator of Deathstroke, the Terminator, yeah. the the new Teen Titans. I mean, yeah. all of that stuff. So it's like Perez is a legend, yeah. and he did do um, a Turtles cover for that uh, 100 project oh, that they cool. did for Hero Initiative. Mm -hmm. So so he has touched the property, and uh, unfortunately he passed away maybe about four months ago now yeah. of uh, of cancer. So it's a very very sad loss, but. Wonderful yeah. guy. Got to meet him a handful of times. Uh, probably only really talked to him once. Uh, like, the the couple times I did get to meet him was obviously that. That's but, cool. Uh, uh, but, like, every other time it seemed like I was in a crowd with him. So, like, it was just sort of like he was kind of holding court. And I got to kind of be around that, which was cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but, like, wh what a sweet guy he was. Great so, guy. um are you a big dc guy then because i yeah, mean we've yeah, talked, yeah. yeah okay all right me too so <laughs> yeah yeah i, I so I, I, yeah. we were saying before we got on air i was a big justice league guy growing up so um you know i think it really started with um again like you know you get dropped off at like half price books borders or something like that or drugstore whatever i'd be reading uh it started with morrison's run which is the first like series i became a regular collector of because like i think at that time i was just kind of getting comics intermittently there was a comic shop in my hometown called bears cards and comics which unfortunately no longer exists um and i'm finding a hard finding it hard to find people who remember it too which is kind of crazy uh but um I, I remember it very vividly but uh i i started getting morrison's jla run uh I think started with issue five and then uh so right after the first four issues and it was the first appearance of electric blue superman and jla oh yeah i yeah. mean but um yeah and then then i got the, the i don't the, think that was his idea but i think he no was but working he, made with it, it, so. he made it so cool oh yeah that was oh, the yeah. brilliance of it of, and, that, and that's one of like the biggest things in comics where they're like yeah. oh superman red superman blue it's like yeah, but love read the Justice League because you know it's like between that and Zario yeah. and the really cool Aquaman and Z you know. Zario was great. And, oh yeah, and I love that uh, they uh, in incorporated uh, Zario into like future stuff that they wrote. So like, yeah, Zario yeah. was in Final Crisis, and um, uh, I think he was in Infinite Crisis, and yeah. I feel like I saw him in either Metal or Death Metal. Oh, probably. So I, I haven't read those, um, but uh, they're yeah. fun. <laughs> so, so I, I, I've kind of who making this stuff. It makes it hard to get a chance to like read, like keep up with like continuity. So oh, yeah. I'm, reading, I'm reading a lot more independent series lately uh, because of it. Anyway, so I, yeah, I was a big DC nut. So I started like you know started with Morrison's run, and then I started collecting Satellite Era Justice League, which I love. I still love that stuff. Um, and one of my favorite issues is a Perez Shaggy Man issue. And I, oh, I think cool. that was my first, um, I think it was the second time they fought the Shaggy Man. And it's got a cover of like Batman fighting Shaggy Man on a rocket that's heading towards, <laughs> it's, it's, it's taking off. That's pretty crazy. And, it's like, uh, it's like fighting Chewbacca basically. Yeah. 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 Just like the Shaggy <laughs> Man was like. <laughs> but unstoppable. Exactly. Um, and, uh. Yeah, uh, so I love I love that I love JLI stuff a lot. We were talking about JLI a little bit earlier, like that. Yeah, stuff that's is great. that's my jam right there. I, I have like it. a shrine to Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. So. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. your, your your screen name is a Booster Gold. Yeah, right? it is. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to um, at uh, Fan Expo in Cleveland. I had a really cool experience where I uh, went to dinner with a bunch of artists, and Kevin McGuire was one of them. Oh, nice! And that was really that was really cool in general. But the king I, I, of facial expressions, and that that was like we talked. I got to talk to him about that, which I thought was cool. Uh, but I, I got a I got a kind of a, uh, you know, it was kind of the the, the kid at the table. I'm 36 years old. And I'm still the kid. So, uh, <laughs> but I was I was kind of the kid at the table, and I I got something that kind of get like uh, we were talking about just like moments in comics, and he's like, you know, if you can just get like one moment in there. And that, that could define your whole career. And I go, yeah, man, all you just need is one punch. And he just kind of looked at me like, that was oh, and I was like, yeah. And, wow. uh, like, and uh, so that, I thought that was a really cool moment. And so it kind of made him chuckle too. And I was like, cool. Know, yeah, well, it's like, yeah. And it's like, yeah. cool, this guy that's made me laugh for years, I got to get, get a laugh out of him. So that was good. 
Yeah, I, I got to have a conversation with, uh, with with a couple greats. One one of which you've wor- already worked with, uh, yeah. Mark Wade. Oh, and yeah. um, my my specific questions for him were about like Kingdom Come and where was Booster sure. Gold and all that. So <laughs> I was just like, oh, what was, um, he, he was, what was it like working thing. with Mark? Uh, easy. I mean, uh, it, it, it was uh, we we did a six page story in uh, this anthology called uh, The Good Fight. Um, and uh, it, it was really cool because I've, I've known Mark uh, here and there because he used to live in Indiana for a bit. So oh, we'd no run into each other at conventions and say hi. We did a couple of signings where we got invited to the same signing, you know. And um, so he, he knew who I was. Uh, excuse me. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was really easy. Like he had a script ready to go. It was airtight. So like he just kind of let me do my thing. I turned it in. It was like, looks great. Boom. And then, nice. I mean, like everything about that gig, it was, I think it was only like five or six pages. It, it just was a breeze. So, uh, I mean, uh, the That's colors... like working with like, like if you were to put it into terms of, of like, uh, like sports, right. That's yeah. like working with like the top Cy Young winning it pitcher was, well, and like, you're just, you're catching and you're it like was, calling it, but everything's like, yeah. Oh, it, it was, it was, it was so easy. It was like Jordan <laughs> Pippin Rodman. Yeah, yeah, because, exactly. because okay, that's like, a better one. If, if, yeah. if Wade's there, if Wade's Jordan, then like I'll I'll take Pippin, and then our colorist was Chris O'Halloran, who was yeah, Rodman, and it was it was man, and uh, Bernardo <laughs> Bryce, who's a great letterer, he he brought it all home, and uh, it, it was just one of the yeah, easiest I'm, jobs I've ever had. Uh, I'm just I mean, it was challenging, that, but know? like it was it was, it was a very uh, heart tugger of a story. So and it was the last story in the anthology. So if you can get it, it's called the Good Fight. Um, it's out there. Um, I, I, you think it's on Comicsology? I'm sure it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I definitely recommend people to get it. I'll I'll read it. The Good I, Fight I, I had. Yeah, it, I, I think had if you Google page. it, there's a way to order it um, through the. Jeez, Adam. Oh, he's gonna kill me. I, I'm so bad at uh, remembering things on the spot like this. Uh, well, in your defense, you had no idea the conversation was going to go here. So, right, Adam Ferris, my friend okay. Adam Ferris. Yeah, you can get it. It's super. Easy. I think he has it on his Etsy shop. Just oh, look nice. up the Good Fight comic. Uh, it's like fifteen bucks, and it's it's full of like killers. Like I think Gabe Hardman's in it, uh, or uh, and J.H. Uh, Williams. Uh, maybe not Gabe Hardman, but I'm pretty sure J.H. Williams is in it. Um, I got it over there. That's, oh, that's that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Now, wh- what about your book? We were uh, talking a little bit. You had a book that you brought out called Human City. Can sure. you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I only did one issue of it, ever. But it's pretty much the reason I'm in comics now. Uh, so I-, I was a student at the Joe Kubert School uh, back when Joe was still with us. Um, so I-, I actually got to be taught by him. So our third That's year... That's great. Yeah. It- man, what an experience that was. That was awesome. I, I still... I, I remember when I think Andy had to finish up the art uh, on um, Night Owl for the Before Watchmen because so, so, Joe had just passed. So Andy was drawing it. Joe was inking Andy. Oh, Saint, no kidding. Saint, Saint Kevich came in and finished Andy. Oh, all right. Or, or, so, yeah, he finished Andy's pencils because Joe passed away in the middle of that run. Yeah. And by the um, way, that's that's another legendary turtle artist is uh, Bill Sienkiewicz, who yeah, is just a Bill's great. living legend. So Still great. Yeah. Bill's, <laughs> Bill's an awesome. Really cool guy too. I got to sit next to him once at a convention. What a, what a guy! Um, My head might explode. Yeah. Oh. I'll get to that. We'll, we'll yeah. get to that. So uh, <laughs> Joe, Joe comes in. It's our first day, or that's like our second day, because uh, we had uh, the way the way the school was set up. It's five days a week, um, two classes a day, uh, ten classes a week total, and set up like high school hours. So you show up at eight thirty, go till about three and uh homework it's intense oh yeah homework every class and uh it's tuesday was joe's day so uh he pops in tuesday morning we're the first class to have him and then he teaches the afternoon class which is across the hall but he pops in he's like all right not all you're gonna get jobs with dc and marvel so you need a backup plan and so we're gonna make our 
up our own ideas. So I need to cover and five pages of pencils by next week. And we're like, Jesus fucking Christ, Joe, we've got <laughs> nine other classes. Like, you wow, know, wow, like, wow. and like, this is like the second day of our like third year, which is my, my idea is year. called Sergeant Stone. Yeah. And, right. uh, it's, uh, it's about a, uh, an army guy, right. world war two. Who? Well, uh, <laughs> well, that, that had me like, kind of like I had the, the name human city kind of in my back pocket. Uh, cause I'd been in a band with some friends and we called it human city and it only lasted like a couple months. So I was like, all right, this name's too good. I'm going to keep it. So, um, it's a pretty good name. Yeah. yeah. I liked it. It was, uh, so I, I did this, like, uh, it was kind of like a mix of like a lot of things right now. And it was kind of my excuse to draw everything. So it was like this post-apocalyptic last superhero. It was very much like, uh, lone wolf and cub and Mandalorian, uh, before, Mandalorian was a thing. Uh, so this was back in 2010. I started making it in Joe's class. And then uh, after I graduated, I came home. Like we did the first five pages. We had to pencil five pages and do a cover. And then the next week it was inks and letters and the next week colors. So uh, I had five pages and a cover ready to go. And then afterwards, um, after I graduated from the school, uh, we had our DC and Marvel interviews, and those were cool. Like, I got an email back from DC. They wanted me to do test pages. And my mindset at the time was like, ah, no, just, thanks. <laughs> well, I had just spent three years at the Joe Kubert School doing nothing but test pages. I was ready to make my own comic. And, uh, you know, the best way that I could think of to get work making more comics is to make a physical comic book that I can put in people's hands. I mean, it's one thing to show people that you can draw the stuff. Oh, yeah, of course. But it's another thing to put a finished product in their hands and be like, yes, I can get it done. I can deliver this. So that was my mindset. And um, you know, I probably should have done those samples because like, <laughs> I, I actually went to email that guy back about uh, after I finished my first issue of Human City, and he was gone from the company. That could have been my break into DC. Oh, well, whatever. Uh <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. You know, I've, I've been doing just fine for myself. Um, anyway, I, so I made my first comic. I wrote it, penciled it, inked it, colored it, lettered it, uh, used like the last $300 to my name at the time to self-publish it. I was working uh, as a waiter and a uh, doing graphic design for this local mom and pop newspaper uh, here in Indy. And then, like, whenever I got every free moment, I would work on Human City. Uh, got it out in the world. Uh, debuted it at C2E2 in 2012. So this past C2E2 was the 10-year anniversary of it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I probably should have done something for it. But, eh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, so I put it out. Uh, and then, like, there was, like, a string of conventions that I did, like, six weeks in a row. So I did C2E2. I did... Uh, I think Gem City Comic Con. I did Pittsburgh Comic Con. I did like Louisville or maybe St. Louis, something like that. Like kind of in that area. Motor City was around that time as well. And then I ended it with like a gallery show here in Indianapolis where I put all the original pages up on the wall and had people oh, cool. come in on a first Friday. It was super cool. And then while well, that kind of calmed down, I started to put together what would be the second issue. And then I never got around to it because then I got hired by. Uh, Blue Juice Comics, who at the time was Upstart Company, and they hired me to draw a series called The Accelerators, which I spent a long time doing. So that was yeah, that's that's awesome. Do you yeah. do you have a desire to go back and do that eventually, or you think that you've moved on from to the idea? Human City? Yeah. Uh, um, it, it always every once in a while kicks back in my head to like maybe do it again, but then. Uh, like I said, ar around, you know, a couple of years ago, The Mandalorian came out, and they literally did, like, some of the ideas that I had. Oh, yeah. So, which is, yeah. like, you know, fine. Like, you know, I, that, they weren't, like, revolutionary ideas. I was doing ideas that Lone Wolf and Cub had, had you know? So it was, um, and, and that's fine. Uh, maybe I'll get around to it, and I'll just retool it. And, like, if, if I did it at this point, I'd, I'd completely revamp it. Because it's, you know, it's 10 years later, I'm a much much better artist uh than i was 10 years ago and at the time when i did human city it took me six months to make one issue of human city and it takes me six seven weeks to make an issue of a comic now that's wow 
That's the oh, difference. Holy. And that's like, a huge difference. And it's yeah. and, and the quality is much better too. So, um, yeah, I, I would want to redo it, rewrite it, redraw it, maybe hire a professional letterer because I'm not the best at it. Uh, like I, I had like, oh, it does I, make a difference. Yeah, right? like I, I kind of did the bare bones version of lettering. Um, I would probably, you know, do it in color this time because I did it in black and white originally, so I was gray toning it digitally. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I, I would do a lot of things differently now if I were to come back to it. But at the same time, like I've moved on to other creator-owned projects as well. So um, after, you know, did my run on accelerators, um, uh, past couple of years, I have been working on a, uh, a book called Dead Legends, which is uh, like kind of the book I, I've always wanted to, which I, I think this will resonate more with your audience, Turtles fans, um, because it's a martial arts book. And, yeah, and I, I was looking at that, and I wasn't sure if if that was Bruce Lee on the cover. Nah, it's it's uh, it's or a Bruce Lee like uh, analog. Sure, yeah, it's it's very much in that same vein, where I grew up with these martial arts movies, um, where I was watching like Enter the Dragon. And oh yeah, Bloodsport. And, you know, John. Van Damme movies, Bruce Lee movies, oh. whoever. I, I uh, just saw that they had a slideshow yeah. collectible, right? That came out of Frank Dukes from Bloodsport. Oh, right? I've seen that. It looks it, so good. It's $2,500. I know. Oh my gosh. It, it's like, That's it's such humongous. A stupid amount of money that I, I don't know. I, I would have that. And there's the Bolo Young, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, when, I'm like, oh, I would, I would get the Bolo before I get the other right? one. Right. It's, it's so tempting. Like, um, but anyway, I, I wanted to do, you know, my my martial arts tournament movie, well, but in comic form, like and a Kubite. Like, yeah, and I had a Love couple that, characters yeah. in my back pocket, and I had an idea for what the story was, but I knew I wasn't the right guy to put it all together. Mm-hmm. So I, I uh, there was one night, uh, there was, you know, this is the the quick and easy version of this story but like uh my friend james maddox and i were gonna do uh a story for this very uh at the time established series uh from a major publisher that we kind of got the runaround on for like months up to over a year and you know now it's been about eight years since all that went down it never got published and like we did all the work um and it's such a cool story that never no one will ever see anyway um can you tell us what character it was around no you can't okay no it's 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 a little too damning um so anyway and and i don't need to drag anybody it was just it's that's literally comics it happens all the time oh yeah no so you know we when we were at the time james and i were pretty upset about it because like this was supposed to be like our brick you know and uh, we were just sort of like and it happened again, like with a different thing as well, oh. like it, like literally twice in a row. And we, we fell for it each time and both times it happened. So we were just sort of like, yo, we obviously like working together. Why don't we just do our own thing? Like we put together with these two projects enough for like a full comic book. Why don't we just make our own comic book? So uh, he's like, well, what do you want to do? And we were at a convention in Louisville and I had just come back from dinner. I was working on commissions drinking and talking shit and uh, <laughs> I, like i was just sort of like i want to do this martial arts tournament book and i was telling him like you know i've got these characters a little bit of a story but like i need you to make all my batshit crazy ideas make sense and he was like yeah i can do that and we started putting it together and not much longer later we uh we had a great script um i started drawing it it flowed so easily um and like the fight scenes like he was trying to write the fight scenes and i was like just stop writing the fight scenes. yeah <laughs> like 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 uh like give me like the breakdown of how many pages i have to do a fight and like give me like bullet points if there's any like story things that i can do but like but i'm gonna write the fight scene so like i'm a technically a co-writer on this uh <laughs> definitely a co-plotter but i we consider me like a co-writer because when it comes to the fight scenes, I am 
like playing jack. It's Corey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're cool. you're telling the story by mm-hmm. drawing. Yeah, and uh, but but we are co creators. It is it is a very uh, fluid, uh, I guess, uh, collaboration. Like it is very much our idea. Like it, it started out as my idea and became our idea. Like he's created characters for it that enhanced the story that I never would have thought of and like came up with things that I never would have thought of. That sounds love. really cool. And yeah, and, and vice versa. So, uh, do you have any characters that are based off of like, uh, maybe someone from like the, the turtles universe or anything? You'd be like, you know, I always liked how Leo did that thing or, you know, uh, uh, Donnie does this and I think it's cool. You know, uh, not necessarily, uh, not turtles. Uh, I don't know. There's there's a little bit of uh, I, I guess th- there's a character named Barbosa, who's a little bit uh, got a little Michelangelo in him, uh, and I and I mean that as far as like he's almost got like he, he's a little bit of the comedy relief, but he's got heart as well, which is what I really like about Michelangelo. Like he's he's definitely the the one that feels uh, like this is a little deeper than I think the surface level that's on. Um, so I, I'm I'm with you on that, and that's yeah. that's kind of something that's always been about the character. It's like as much as he jokes around and all that, like he's definitely yeah, the heart. He he cares a lot. Like they, I think they all care in their own way, right? Um, Some show them more than others, right? Um, you know, and, and that's what is so great about turtles that each one has unique characteristics. Uh, but uh, Mikey, I think, cares a little deeper for people. And uh, he's maybe even part empathic a little bit too. Uh, yeah, it, you know where, where he kind of feeds off of that energy and you know, right. like and, and tries to like outwardly change how others are around him and you know yeah. where, whereas like Raph will affect everybody in like a negative way. Mikey will try to do it positively. And, right. Yeah, I can see he tries that. to bring everybody together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and Raph is kind of uh, and it's funny. Like I, I always say this when talking about turtles. Like there's. I would hang out with each, like, who, who would you hang out with the most is, like, a question you get sometimes. And it's like, I would hang out with each of them on, depending on what mood I'm in. You know, if I want to talk shit, I'll go hang out with Raph. Mm-hmm. If I, yep. if I uh, when I have an intelligent conversation, I'll go hang out with Donnie. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to get a project done, probably Leo, you know, like, something like that. Like, you know, like, somewhere, like, Leo's more driven, I think, than the rest. Uh, you know, if I want to have a good time, I go hang out with Mikey, you know, and, um, good time. Well, yeah. which turtle would you start a small bid- business with? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Donnie, Donnie for Yo, sure. I was uh, saying the exact yeah. same thing, be yeah. Donnie. Donnie's the numbers guy. There's a We're lot all of- wrong. He's the numbers. The the food truck. Yeah. It's a food hey. truck and I have Mikey in the back cooking, you know? Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's terrible. Pigeon Pete. Raphael doing terrible. the butchering. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, Raphael's doing a lot of the grunt work. Yeah, like it's like, yeah. all right, go get, go get the ice out of the basement. Lee was the front of the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you no, go. Yeah, he's he's managing the, yeah. the staff yeah. and, and hosting yep. and all that. So, and and um, Splinter's not allowed to be seen because it's like Ratatouille. <laughs> like yeah, like Raph and Casey Jones are like the short order cooks. They're just like, oh that, they're, oh they're, my they're, god, that would be great. no, no. Casey's on dishes. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd, I I love a good Raph and, and Casey moment Gungala like that. Quit in the back. Everyone in front can hear you. So. <laughs> Dang it, Casey. You broke another glass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's that's part of the fun of the show, too, is yeah. um, I, I'll actually, like, read through the, the stories and the voices and all that. And, oh, and, cool. And and Casey and, Ra- and Raph are so close. It's just, like, that little tiny difference that you it. have. In the, it's, mm-hmm. like, it's, like, out of everybody, they seem the most, like, brothers to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's funny, and I kind of I like uh, I'm I'm gonna read uh, pr- probably the only like non indie book I'm reading right now is Turtles. Uh, and I'm, I'm reading through the IDW run on Comicsology, and I'm uh, about uh, where am I at? I'm closing in on where Rat King comes in, so I'm in the middle of Dave uh, Wachter's run right now. Uh, so like when they're visiting all the entities and stuff like that. Um. Oh, where was I going with this? Uh, I think you. I think you're in the 70s, right? So it's uh, um, about, about. I think 82. 
So it, okay, so you're yeah. you're just past the Triceraton War, right? Into, right. Okay, cool. Yep. So like, I think City at War is coming up, um, and the, yeah, the, uh, closing in on issue 100. Didn't it blow you mind? Blow your mind that like Tom King did all, or not Tom King? Uh, Tom Walls did all. all of this. You know, just like from issue one all the way through issue 100, it's like no one's done that since like Chris Claremont. You know, <laughs> it's like uh, yeah, I mean. That's a lot. I mean, well, Snyder, Snyder did a lot about, about Snyder did, all of, yeah. Eric them. Larson, I suppose. Eric Larson still sure. go with Adam. Yeah. So I, but I mean, I mean, the next closest person would probably be Snyder on yeah. 52 Batman. Um, yeah, yeah. He did a, he did a huge run from yeah. uh, 2011 until uh, Rebirth. Yeah. And then Tom King, I guess, on Batman currently. And, or, I, and well, I will stand by the Tom King run. I loved it. So I, it's I, I thought not it everybody does. But I, did. I fell out of it because, like, I was just reading, like, I, I, I'm working so much. So, like, yeah, yeah. I have them all. I have not read them all. <laughs> but there's there's little human moments in it yeah. where it's like Batman and Superman are hanging out, and they're like, "Oh, I bet I could throw this ball, you know, so yeah. fast that that he can't hit it," you know. And it's like like stupid stuff like that, and I'm like. That's exactly where I'm at at my age, you know, where it's like they're on a double date with Lois and Catwoman and they're yeah, trying to like just talk issue. shit to each other. And I'm like, dude, double date was amazing. Like those yeah, little moments issue. like that in the second annual where, you know, they talk about like how Batman met Catwoman and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, those human moments define a character. Oh, yeah. And and I, I just I love that kind of stuff. And and Snyder stuff is so good. You know, I mean, I. Yeah. I know you said you hadn't got a chance to read uh, metal or, or death metal or anything like that. Right. Metal's very good, you know, okay. and death metal is off the wall crazy. So yeah. it's like, all right, thanks. Yeah, it's um, if you like Sergeant Rock, he's a zombie in right. it. So oh, okay, like, and there's a dinosaur who's also <laughs> Batman. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, That's it's, it's a little crazy. Okay, That's fun because I, I know, yeah, I know there's a Sergeant Rock series coming out soon that has him as a zombie. Uh, Sergeant yeah. Rock. Uh, just written uh, a story by Bruce Campbell. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. I think that's actually coming out this month, if it's not already out by the time this is released. But yeah. you know, um, our, our listeners are obviously going to know Bruce Campbell from Evil Dead, Ash vs. Right. the Evil Dead, all that stuff. So you know, I imagine if you like the same stuff I do, you probably love that stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, let's see. Um, yeah. So um, your next issue that you have coming out is uh, number one thirty four. I think we're just about there. That's got to be released this month, right? Uh, I think it comes out in November. Oh no! Okay, so we're yeah, we're a little it was, it was announced out. in this month's previews. So, yeah, it um, looks fantastic. I've seen the original you. artwork. It's yes. it's really cool. Thank so, you. it's uh the the story is is basically there's um the the youngest Triceraton has been born for the first time in like fifty years or something like that, right. and in a very kind of Superman play, they're sending her to Earth to get her away from. You know, all of this kind of like Game of Thrones stuff that's going on between the Utram and the Triceraton Council and all that. So it's it's like some some really high stakes stuff. And the only people that they can think of that they know who are honorable that will help her are the turtles. Yeah. And right there on the cover, right? I believe it's Raph, right? That's on the cover with her? Donnie. Oh, it's Donnie. Okay. So Donnie's on the cover with her and and um, you know, she's kind of hiding and it's it's as I mentioned, it's very like X Men uh days of future past, like hiding from sentinel kind of yeah, stuff it's and it's and really it kind of takes fun. place in the middle of armageddon game as well so it's uh like i think tom uh while it's posted the checklist of like what to get in what order uh which you know since i've been reading all the idw stuff like they're so good at that like everything especially like in those those big hardcovers they put out um Oh, everything yeah. is in order the way you need to read it and like you know sometimes you're just like oh man i don't know i don't know if i need to read uh ghostbusters and ninja turtles crossover like is it really important and then you like find I feel out like those like, are yeah words, you have to but... read that shit because it's important to the main story like it all comes back around it's kind of crazy um but uh I mean, I love Ghostbusters, but I'm like, why would they team up? And then it's like, oh, there's a very key thing for Turtle, like the main series. Well, it, it's funny, too, because I'm it's not nice. a big Power Rangers guy, but they had an amazing crossover with the Power Rangers. Yeah. Like, that's, and it was a huge deal. Yeah. So, I mean, it may not be my jam, but uh, I'm going to read it. Have you right? read Ghostbusters yet? You need uh, to, okay? Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to read that, you know. And, yeah. It's and, okay. And now they're coming out with a sequel. Yeah. So, um, 
but yeah so so it's it's uh so i, I know i know that my ish my my first cover comes out during the middle of armageddon game so they wanted me to they, they gave they gave me a prompt for my first one and then they asked me to do uh a cover for armageddon game uh for issue four so they said like you know it can kind of take place like it gave me parameters uh but like my my next cover is probably my favorite of the bunch that i've done for them so far oh, that's cool yeah do you, do you get to play with any characters that you wanted to bring in uh i get to play with all five turtles which okay is great and then uh rat king uh is on the cover as well and I, I'll, I'll describe it but i can't show it yeah no worries <laughs> yep. it's, it's it's rat king kind of lording over him and then like all the turtles being attacked by a swarm of rats and i drew like a billion rats on this thing oh, oh wow uh, like and like there's like you know and each turtle is fighting them their own way um leo front and center and then like the rest of them kind of like almost like a flying v in the back like sort of like fighting and uh now do you make own... subtle differences with your turtles like do you put like a scar on leo's eye do you put like a crack part for like a raft to tell them apart yourself like do you have any uh, little idiosyncrasies uh facial expression stuff like like how they would react to a situation so like that, that makes Leo's sense. Leo's a little bit more determined. Wrath has got a little bit more rage in his face. Uh, uh, Jenica is a little more disciplined. Um, uh, Donnie, uh, not so, like like in, in the way it's reacting. It's like they're just being swarmed, right? So so Mike Mike's freaking out, like ah, like and uh, Donnie is kind of like a little intense, but like still like present in his facial expression so uh that, I, I i try to work their personality in their facial expression so like i, I don't uh don't do the scar on leo's eye um not not I, everybody I, does and yeah it's, does he, it it shows up every it? once in a while and i think it's from koya when uh when they fought like way back in like uh when andy coon was doing it like uh -huh. maybe issue like 15 or 16 okay. or something like that so and she's she's the falconist, so she uh, I think caught him by the eye and scratched him and. Uh, I I was reading, I think when I did that cover, I was on uh, the secret history of the Foot Clan. I was yeah. reading that. Yeah. So there was a big uh, Leonardo gets cut on his arm moment. So I did put a bandage on that arm. Cool. So like uh, as a little. There it is, uh, I guess Easter egg. Yeah, no, that's yeah. that's great. Yeah. Now, um, you, you had mentioned before uh, when we were talking about Last Ronin, uh, Ben Bishop. Yeah. We're, we're big fans of Ben Bishop. We we actually met through the Bish Kids and all oh, that, cool. so mm -hmm. we're we're in his club. I haven't had the pleasure. I was trying to meet him at Heroes Con, but he had to pull out. So, oh, that's how, yeah. that stinks. I, I know he's going to be at Granite. So, and um, oh, okay, that's you know, a, a couple big, others coming. Big out. show, a lot of yeah. Lot of oh yeah, that's that's his, that's his stomping grounds, pretty much. Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah, New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reason I mentioned Ben is because we know that he has done like some little Easter egg type stuff. Like he put sure. Kino in there from the second movie oh, and cool. like all kinds of aliens references and Peter and mm -hmm. Laird and, and, yeah. and all that. Like he slips that kind of stuff in. Um, have you ever done that with some of your art, like slipped in some Easter eggs and things oh, that maybe sure. like only you would know? Uh, yeah, I think in, there's, I mean, there's uh in dead legends, like in, in, uh, uh the main character's room we do a flashback to uh our main character yan so it's, it's kind of like in the crux of the story like uh where to go back a little bit the gist of dead legends is a woman's husband gets killed by a blind tiger uh who's our main villain of the story and she has to enter the tournament to get revenge against blind tiger but she can't just straight up fight him she has to run the brackets in order to get to him so anyway, uh, we do this bit in the beginning where um, right before Blind Tiger kills Yan's husband, Ishii, uh, they're in bed. Uh, just got done doing the nasty. Uh, but you see like a down shot of their room and there's a, a, a poster on the wall and it's a Human City movie poster. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's I, cool. I, I do that. Um there's stuff like that. There's, you know, uh, like, and sometimes I just do stuff that makes me laugh. Um, like, uh, 
in, in the cover I just described uh, for the Armageddon game before, like, they're swarmed with rats, right? My favorite rat I drew on this thing, and there's like a million rats on this thing. You're no, you might not notice it unless I tell you about it, but there's a little tiny rat that's coming out of the back of Raphael's pouch. <laughs> like like it's, it's it's like a pouch on his back. There's just one little tiny rat that found his way in his pouch, and he's just popping out like going, hey. Um, like, so stuff like that I, I'll pouch do. Pouch rat. Yeah. Um, those are the two I can think of off the top of my head. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to look for that. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And you, you mentioned these, are, um, they're both going to be retail exclusives? or Retailer incentives. Incentives. So, yeah. So it's like a one in ten or one in however many. I think one in ten. Um, but then I am doing a retailer exclusive Lost Years number one cover with uh, my local shop, Comic Book University. Um, and that'll be, you know, coming out day of release, which I think is December 7th. That's that's good, because I'm not sure that they've given us like a solid release date on our end. Yeah, it it, it just came out in this past previews, I think. Yeah, it was like so, a December 6th or December 7th is when yeah. it was to come out. Whichever one's a Wednesday. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, with the last run and everything, I expect more, even more pushbacks. I probably won't. You probably yeah, won't I, see it I until next so. year. That's just me. Um, well, I, the, I'm i not the, mad the, about the, it. The, you know, not pages, either. So the pages you saw from me, the, the last run and pages you saw, mm-hmm. were a tryout from IDW. That wasn't me just doing it for fun. So that they had asked me to do it. I think I was trying out for Lost Years. I don't think I got it. Uh, I'm I'm still in touch with them though. Uh, kind of figuring out. Who knows? Who knows what what the future? They're looks. awesome. But like like so yeah. good. You know, mm-hmm. and, and yeah. like distinctive style. I posted so them it, on my Twitter. It doesn't today, look so. like it. You know, it it like it, it looks like oh this is the action this is the scene like like scene for scene but it's not like you copy the exact style no, it's your style yeah. which is so great. I mean, I did I did have the benefit of having the issue in front of me, uh, and and what they did so the tryout, uh, what they asked me to do is they send me Eastman's layouts, so I was working directly from those, and then I changed oh. things up on my own, which was kind of cool in its own right. Um, but yeah, so like I, I had. I mean, the, the storytelling was there. It was already done. I had to add, like, little bits here and there to make it my own. Um, so that was cool. So, that, like, I, I did that back in... Uh, I, I posted them on my Twitter today. So if you're on here, you just check the bottom here. And anyone watching can go to yeah. the bottom of the screen where it says, yeah. at Gavin P. Smith. Yeah, so. and it's like... I'm going to check this on Instagram now. right now. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I posted a panel from it on Instagram. Well, um, I know he sent me pictures yeah, of yeah. Mm-hmm. of your stuff, and I was like, my jaw hit the floor, and I'm like, you know, because, I mean, I do have some stuff, yeah, um, yeah. a couple things, nice. yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that that uh, that one right there that you see is uh-huh. actually Mike Roos issue five cover. Okay, cool. He had uh, actually Justin has his issue four. And yep. I also actually have Mike Roos issue one thirty two cover two as well. Oh, the, the is that the shredder the, the helmet? big yeah. yeah with the big old shredder oh, yeah, helmet. Yeah, I saw that. That's a good cover. one. Yeah, yeah. That one's cool. that one's got to be coming out soon too. Yes. Yeah. And, and shout out to Mike Ruth and Hugh Rookwood, man. Oh, he's yeah. great. I think we awesome follow each guys. other on Instagram. Uh, he's really yeah, cool. they're 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 really 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 cool guys i talked i talk i'm personally a good friend of of Ruth myself oh cool and you know like me and him he he sends me all kinds of turtle stuff so nice. you know <laughs> i'm not going to complain about it <laughs> yeah right i wouldn't imagine um i just about lost my mind when i saw you drew dark claw <laughs> like boom because i've got yeah. i've got that comic framed up here next to my blue beetle stuff. and my signed Ninja turtles Dude. comics and all that I don't like uh, Wolverine and Batman mixed together. I, mean, just, oh, ah! I love the idea of the amalgam universe uh, in general. So good. So, like I, I wish that was uh, more of a thing. There is um, no reason they couldn't continue this. Like there's no reason they, they right. everybody would make money on the deal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would love that. Like I, I try to like anytime like it shows up as like, like I think the last time I drew him was at the Lexington Comic Con. Uh, oh, was it a commission? Yeah, so that was a commission. There's wow. there's another time I've drawn Dark Claw. Uh, I did a bat, uh, you know, Inktober 
I don't call it Inktober anymore, but like, uh, uh, I did a Bat-tober in 2020, and like, so I was doing all these Batman-related ones, and I did a Dark Claw. So, oh, that's uh, cool. That, that was fun. Um, so, any chance I can get to draw those characters, like, please bring it oh, on. Oh man, it, I know you got the Kid Flash the up duck. there. Yeah, yeah, Lobo the Duck, Speed Demon would be a cool yeah. one. Part Spider Ghost Boy, Rider, Part Flash, Spider Boy, um, yeah. and uh, I mean the JLX. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot, a lot of them are just great. Like, Give it to great me. characters. Doctor Strange Fate. Yeah, just, uh, Strange Fate yeah. is good. Um, Super Soldier, did you say that one? Yeah, uh, Super Soldier, Amazonia, I yeah. think, which was like Storm and Wonder Woman mixed. Yeah. And it, it, the, the one that really Iron got Ninja. me was Dark Claw, because like then you've got the Joker mixed with Sabretooth for uh, the hyena. Yeah. And and I mean, like that's a frightening character. Oh, yeah. So it's it's like, I, I love that they did the animated jarring. series version of it too. Yeah, like and they were all one shots to be continued, and then <sighs> yeah, nothing. Um, it's sad, but it was it was such a great part, period of time. And it was. It, I, I'll I tell you one thing: when coming out. I I met Ron Mars, and um, mm-hmm. of course, the one thing that you shouldn't do when you meet Ron Mars is mention the one thing that he has to talk about every day of his life for the rest of his life. So about this Wolverine and Lobo match. You know, oh it's my like God. every I was day. So he, bummed about that. Every day of his life, he fan. he deals with this, and I'm <laughs> really? like, I'm so I figured, sorry. I figured he got probably got more uh, heat from Heat, well, the he, he Hal's the, Emerald uh, Avenger yeah. team or whatever it was. Yeah, I mean, he he gets a lot of like Green Lantern stuff and all that, but oh, he yeah. says like far and away number one is you know the the four panel story that he did you know with Dan Jurgens and it was, or I think it was Dan Jurgens that did the art for that. And, and it's Lobo versus Wolverine. They go under a, under a bar, and then they get up, and, and Wolverine wins. And he's like, "It's his cigar. It's Lobo's cigar." Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I I did get to uh, like like I, I know Daryl Banks. Like Daryl's Daryl and I get along really well. Like I see him at a lot of shows. He's a Midwest guy too. So I actually got to sit next to him at a show one time, and like I was a big Green Lantern fan as well. That's uh, cool. I, I, I love Kyle Rayner. So like. I got to sit next to him and like talk about, uh, you know, how much shit he got from uh, Hal fans uh, back <laughs> in the day. Um, the girlfriend in the fridge thing, like it, it's great. Yeah, I well, I mean, Daryl. that wasn't that wasn't probably his idea. So no, but you know, <laughs> I, I won't give away all Daryl's secrets on here. But like, he, <laughs> he told me it could have been worse. So <laughs> oh, geez, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, wasn't that a Morrison storyline? No, it was Mars. Oh, it was it was Mars? Yeah, okay. it was. It was yeah. like the, it was uh, right after uh, Kyle took over, so it was pretty quick into his run. I think like probably by issue like fifty two, she his girlfriend was dead. Like oh, wow, because uh, Kyle took over in issue fifty, and I think uh, yeah, Hal went rogue, came paralyzed. Um, there was like zero it, it's hour. crazy. I, I was just thinking with all these Star Trek books and all that. You know, they did a they did a Green Lantern Star Trek crossover. You know, right. that that would be an ideal place to put you. You know, for something like that, that, that would be so there's cool. So, there's so many things I, I got to meet. Um, that you guys should get a kick out of this. So, so I did a Star Trek convention in Chicago back in uh, April. Uh, it's the ran by Reed Pop, who does C two E two. It was really expensive to get in, so I didn't go. I believe it. It was um, like three hundred and fifty bucks for tickets. So was it really? How much? Yeah, it was absurd. You know, <sighs> and it was like three days tickets, three fifty, and then you get this. That was probably like VIP stuff, right? On like top of crazy that, stuff. you would pay for VIPs. Oh my and, god! Okay, well, that, that's the thing. You're, you're Star Trek fans, right? You know, it's like, oh well, yeah. I'm a civil engineer. Oh, I'm, oh, okay. Well, you can clearly throw this money around to go right. hop now with Shatner. That's fine. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, there was uh, this bit um, where I got to, whenever I worked on Trek, uh, I, I never talked to CBS. I talked to IDW. So like IDW kind of acts as like this middle man, I guess for lack of a better term. And it's usually like, I, I, Heather Antos is my editor. And she's, oh, cool. She's amazing. Heather's awesome. So Great artist too. Yeah, Heather's great. And many ways, great person in general. Um, so Heather's kind of like my shield, uh, for lack of a better term. She kind of, she gets everything on our end, 
and she sends it to CBS. CBS gives her notes and it's delivered to me in one nice package. So it's not like I'm talking to like four different people, which I think it is like four or five different people that kind of comment and give notes on the issue. And she condenses it into one email for me. So I'm not, it's nice and easy. And, uh, you know, obviously like IDW has, and Heather have their notes as well. They're like, okay, change this, change this, change this. And then Trek wants this, this, this. Great. Um, so they're like for, you know, I, up until that Trek convention, I think I was on, I was drawing issue five or six at the time. And, uh, I had only known the ominous Trek, you know, it was just like Trek once this so like i never met these people and then i got to meet some of them at uh the star trek show and i was just joking around with one of them and i was like you know like what are the chances we can get like you know there was that toy line uh back in the day of ninja turtles as star trek figures like yeah what are the chances we can make that happen she's like never say never if we can make it make sense and i was like <laughs> you know, I kind of like, wow. so that would be very cool too. I'd have to, tri I, like, I don't know how, I, I'm not the guy to make it make sense, but I, I want to be the guy to draw it if it happens. So yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. I want, for, I want to see, I want to see it first. Okay. Yeah. We want to, we want to see it first before anything happens, before you show anybody else. Right. We want to see it. All right. <laughs> Well, you, you could do the turtles not not just as like oh this is what they look like on Enterprise or this is what they look like right. on DS Nine, but you could also do them as aliens, right? Right. Like, here's Donatello as uh, a Borg. Well, that was or, kind of the toy line you know. too. Like I think they did. I mean, like not necessarily like Leo as Spock, but it was like Leo as a Vulcan. So it it could work. I don't know. I, I absolutely think it would work. But I, Playmates but... has you know they had like all of that stuff from. Like Michael Dooney did the 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 art for him, and then they had Varner Studios, who are still doing things today. Right. You know, I, so. I think it's it's a matter of making things make sense within like current continuity that they've got going on. So, uh, especially with Turtles, like because I think they do like to make everything make sense with their line. Uh, like every and, and crossover it's, matters. It's different too because it's not like Marvel where you see Turtles on like oh, well, here's like a little thing to put inside right. your lunch bag and it's going to be on the bag and it's going to be on your backpack and all that. It's not like that. Sure. You know, it's it's still special because it's right. like when you get Turtles, it's like w when the 2012 series came out, it's like, yeah, you could get all that stuff. But right. it's not like that now where you go into like the school shopping place and you're like, oh, wow, another Captain Marvel eraser top. You right. know, it's, it's, it's just so watered down. But, you know, it's to me it's special and if they could do something like that like they're doing with these uh universal monster figures from NECA those uh, are pretty cool and and that's yeah. kind of like a special deal I but, but this is like a second renaissance for turtles man i mean it really is mm -hmm. it's, it's it's crazy yeah and uh that's got a movie awesome. coming out it's the hottest selling comic book of like the last three years there's another you movie know. coming out yeah there's yeah, a movie there's coming out exactly a, a year from um august 8th i think is it the Not a Seth. continuation of Michael Bay. No, no, it's no. Uh, Seth Seth Rogen's version. Seth it's Rogen, been, and there's uh, supposed Paramount. to be a there's supposed to be a, a a live action which guys from Saturday Night Live are doing, and Mr. Scarlett Johansson, Colin Jost. So, <laughs> and they're coming out with another turtle game. They're supposed to be doing. Sick. Give which me more I, Shredder's Revenge. I, I want more. think it's going to no. I don't think it's going to be like that. From what I'm hearing, I think I want to say it's like R eight. I seen a, a little. I kind of glanced the article a little bit. I need to. Uh, I need to look into it some more. Yeah. But I'm hoping. I'm. I'm hoping that they do kind of a a, a Rony game like. Oh Dark, wow! Uh, like uh, like um, Arkham Asylum type deal. That would oh, be that'd insane. Be sick. Yeah. And you I, can have I, a motorcycle I, for motorcycle level. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean. It, just me personally, like I've I've been playing the uh, Arkham City Batman games. Like, yeah. yeah, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City are like my two favorite Batman games. I love those games, hundred sure. percent. The Arkham City one, um, like I think if they did the Ronin and like they did like you know one part, two part. I mean, they they can make a bunch of money off of it because I'd buy every single game. I mean, <laughs> yeah, for yeah, the love everyone. of God, I got twenty eight. I got 28 games. I got 
Xbox games right now. That Did only you buy the Xbox. remake that just came out last week? Of I, the got them a, I got them a, a week, week before, before everybody else. I got them a week before everybody oh, else. Wow. I have this, and I have the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Which, I'm going to be honest with you, I got hooked up with this. They gave me a really, really good deal. Nice. Long story. I paid 50 bucks for two of these. One was a Nintendo Switch, and one was this. Nice. And um, I actually do have the collector's edition coming. Right. Nice. That's, so, that's really cool, man. That's, yeah. I've, I've been playing it nonstop, and... The gem of that for me is, uh, I don't know if you guys have tried it, but there's uh, the third Game Boy game. It's like Turtle Radical Rescue. Rescue. Radical Rescue, man. I have been playing the hell out of that. Yeah, that I haven't game. gotten it yet. I got uh, That game is hard to get. I got Shredder's Revenge. But I, oh, I it's so that. good. Yeah, it was fun. It's, it's funny because Shredder's it's Revenge is like, have you, have you guys played Streets of Rage 4 yet? Yes. Yes, I have. Oh, I love Streets. Like I, I play it's that cool. every day. I, I play the survival mode every day. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, have you tried that yet? Yeah, um, it, I have played like the, it. Yeah, it's a gauntlet. Yeah, it's awesome. So like, if you get Shiva, and you can get going on that, you can turn into like God mode with Shiva. Oh wow! Yeah, because like if you just keep getting the jumps, and like I don't know, like you know, because you get the power I'm kind of like a blaze lifer, so it's it's kind of tough for me. Yeah. <laughs> Shiva fucking rules on that game because if you can really? do the jump, you can do his dash attack, and then from midair in the dash attack you can jump and he does his four hit combo in the air is and he you the can cop? keep that going no he's the no. ninja he's the dude that oh, was the like okay the ninja guy that was like um mr x's number two. Oh, all right all right yeah because yeah. yeah, i'm i'm thinking of the guy who's the cop who his daughter is the one that's that's in there with the hammer or, or whatever she has um i, I was oh I, yeah i thought that was shiva but yeah yeah, 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 yeah. no i that game's amazing and yeah, it's just so good. Any game like that in like Shredder's Revenge where it's like you can play a level. Yeah. So I can like I'm like, oh, I'm just tired. I want to just play the zoo. OK, so I just go and I play the zoo and I'm like, this is why I like video games to do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I can just go on and like All right, I go make dinner, you know, right. but I had six minutes where I could just beat the hell out of, you know, uh, ground chuck. And right. <laughs> you know, see, um, see and that, was, that, was, that was my problem with survival mode and uh, like like where I was like, all right, I'll just play till I die. And then like. But now I'm like really fucking good at it. <laughs> like, so it's like now it's like a two hour like event when I sit down just to do oh, survival because wow. I can just keep going. And I'm like, oh man, like am I good to get past level 57? Like, like oh, I think man. I can get that far in it. It's kind of gross. Eric's a way better gamer than I am. Yeah. Uh, I, I've only really been good at like like three games the original nes nintendo game for turtles right. i'm i'm excellent at that game whoa uh, just beat it the, just the, beat the, it the other day the 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 that that crazy one yeah where it's just the, yeah the, that's like impossible to do yeah yeah I'm, I'm good at that game okay um i'm good at marvel versus capcom 2 right. and um yes and, and uh geez i don't know vagrant story you know like like something else like some rpg or some some garbage right. but it's like i'm not good at a lot of these games i can beat them but it takes like a lot right you know but That's um funny. man i i just i love i love having like stuff like that to go back and, and play and like streets of rage is it's like so inspirational because it's like you it's just that feeling you know yeah. of, of playing that side scroller and it's just it's like double being dragon at home no. Yeah, but they did it so much better than Trouble yeah, Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give me all. No, no, like a, no, a, no, a Bobo no. Who. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Double Dragon was like, like, like one of the first ones I played. So, you yeah. Know. It's crazy because, like, the story with Streets of Rage, like, could be so good. It's so bare bones. Like, they barely do. Like, it's literally just an excuse for, like, a side scroller. Fight, oh, yeah. Fighting game. Like, it's like, there's, like, the bones for a very good story are there, but they, I feel like they haven't told I mean, it. It's also kind of almost exactly golden axe like in yeah. uh, the future yeah so it's like so know. like i would i would love if if the chance ever came up to do uh streets of rage comic sorry oh um, that would be a cool one that, that's like a that's kind who of you, fucking who do you nice. think has the uh the license for something like that i have no idea about that's that license. sounds like an idw this thing this is or not maybe the like, first mm-hmm. podcast i have set yeah. this on so uh, <laughs> Maybe oh, Devil's, sorry. Maybe Devil's do or something. You know, that'd be another one. Or I don't think that's Oni have... still around. Uh, Oni. Oh. Yeah, uh, we'll <laughs> and that was a joke. I was really yeah. serious. Um, <laughs> Oni. Well, I think I think Devils do exist Boom, in maybe. some form. Yeah, but um, I don't know. Uh, I I knew a guy who did some Sonic 
comics not that long ago. Uh, so like those get surprisingly deep. Or not Sonic. He did. He did a. He did something very Sega. And it was kind Sega. of yeah. <laughs> and it was like sort of. I think it was specifically for Sega too. So I'm like, all right, that would probably be the person to talk to. It's part of Street Hyperstone. That, that was my jam. I love that game. I think that might be the best one to be it honest. It might with be. That. It was so yeah. so good. My brother I mean, and I even, would even fight comparing that, that game. to uh, uh, what's what's the other one? Comparing that to uh, yeah. uh, Turtles in Time. Turtles in like, Time. I really liked Hyperstone <laughs> Ice a lot. I liked it too. I I, I remember I remember my uh, my buddy. He rented it, and I was like, "There's a turtle game on Sega? Are you yeah. kidding me? Let's go!" This was actually my first time playing it last week. So the Hyperstone like, Ice one, yeah, yeah. Wow, that that the Hyperstone. My brother and I would get fights because, like, we would just fuck with each other. Like, we would like, I, like he'd be low on life, and I'd just steal his pizza before he gets. Oh it. no! And, like, <laughs> just did like, you have like, a designated? Me and my son get back and forth on that one. Turtles in time, big time. Yeah. 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 Be like, well, he's like, well, I got one less life than you. I don't care. I need the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> there, um, if if you hit like like on PlayStation, if you hit that middle button, it, there's like uh, extra mode where you can actually play in God mode if you want. So oh, there's okay. there's yeah, different yeah, things yeah, you can yeah. do that, and they, you can look at the strategy guide, mode. and and they have um, like cheat codes on some of them. So it's like if you ever get to like look at the other parts of the menu, it's like oh wow, there's actually some really Dude, interesting. They got stuff. so much. I'm, I'm going to tell oh, you yeah. the collection. I. I didn't. I did not realize how much they really, really put into this game. Yeah, and they sure. put a lot into it. With between you know showing us the comic books, the different covers. I mean, they went all the way from the IDW series. Oh yeah, oh. dude! Like like every single Mirage covers on there. Like yeah, like the fifth version of of the of the first issue, the fifth. Yeah, like, and, it, and it's just like, and they and then they did the uh, the the boxes for the games, the Japanese version and the American version and also the manuals. Yeah. Well, I mean, they went all out, which, you know, <clears throat> I got a couple manuals right here. Nice. I just need boxes for these two. Oh, that's cool. That's and that's, cool. uh, it's got Armagon. So that's what super Nintendo. Yeah. It's super Nintendo. I got the, uh, I, the only one I'm missing for tournament fighters is the NES version, which is, I had that. It, it's oh. so unimpressive. <laughs> it's so unimpressive, but yet it's so rare yeah. and expensive. That's like the uh, that's like my uh, my grail of that would be a cool turtle character games. to bring in. And, and I hope that that's one that comes into the IDW series is Hothead, who is the uh, is is kind of like an anthropomorphic dragon that that you know he mm -hmm. turns into a giant kaiju and it's just a guy who's a firefighter. It's it's really cool. So. Well, um, with, with that, I don't want to keep you too much longer because we've already been going for a while here. Oh, this is a great conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where where do you like people to interact with you the most? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, either of those. You can find at the bottom screen here. Right, those right at the bottom of our screen. Yeah. So. Facebook, I keep because my mom's on there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but she's not on Twitter and Instagram, thank God. Um, so you can yeah, post yeah. those dark claw pictures so mom yeah, can't right. see them. Yeah. <laughs> So, By uh, the way, those some really, really good, like good Bronin covers. I mean, commissions as well as uh, oh, yeah. issue one thirty four. That's those are those are pretty nice. I just seen. I was you see me like this, and I was while you guys were talking, I was looking through them. So oh, nice, nice. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you guys the secret stuff when we're off the air. But oh, uh, cool, yeah. And um, folks can look forward to your your uh, Armageddon game cover and uh, issue one thirty four yeah. and uh, the upcoming Lost Lost Years cover. So that's gonna be yeah. I'm gonna be looking for those. I'll make a big deal about it on uh, Instagram and Twitter when it happens. Uh, I'm currently in the midst of trying to acquire as many copies of my one thirty four cover as possible. It's gonna be hard because it's one in ten. So yeah. get out and get there. And and I think the same with the Armageddon game. I'm gonna try my best to get as many as possible. So if you see me at a convention, I can uh, you can get it off me. But uh, when my Lost Years cover comes out, I should have plenty of them. So that's cool. But yeah, but it'll be limited to me and Comic Book University to get them from. So nice, nice, and we'll uh, we'll try to get a link to Comic Book Universe up there when we post the episode mm -hmm. as well. University, you, Comic Book University. Yes. All right. Okay, I got it. All right. So that that makes a big difference. So yeah, yeah. 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 But um, otherwise, uh, I will be back with um, our pizza 
recipe, the BLT. Mm -hmm. um, and I will have that in, in our episode. And um, for the, all the folks watching on YouTube, thank you, uh, YouTube, thank you very much. And uh, enjoy. And we will catch you next time on Epic Tales from the Sewers. See y'all later. See you guys. Thanks for having me. It's pizza time. And now in a segment that we call Pizza Time, where we discuss any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or pizza-related food, I give you Pizza Time. Hey dudes, here's your Pizza Time, the BLT. What happens when the world's most awesome food meets a killer sandwich? This totally tubular pie, Natch, makes one 12-inch pizza. Ingredients, cornmeal or flour for dusting, extra virgin olive oil for brushing and greasing, Four slices of thick-cut bacon, chopped. One pound ball pizza dough, homemade or store-bought. Five slices of American cheese. Two medium or one ripe tomato, thinly sliced. Fine sea salt. One quarter cup mayonnaise. And one half heaping cup of loosely packed shredded bib lettuce. Instructions. On a baking stone or a steel pizza peel, place your baking stone in the middle of the rack of the oven and preheat to 500 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 30 minutes. Then turn the oven to broil. Dust a pizza peel or inverted baking sheet with cornmeal or flour. If you're using a baking sheet, preheat the oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit with a rack in the middle position. Lightly cool a heavy duty, lightly coat a heavy duty rimmed baking sheet with olive oil. Step one, cook the bacon in a medium skillet over medium high heat for five to seven minutes stirring every minute or two until it becomes crisp at the edges. Remove the skillet from the heat and transfer the bacon to a paper towel lined plate to drain. Step two, stretch or roll the dough onto a 12 inch disc and place it on the prepared pizza peel or baking sheet. Step three, brush the dough lightly with oil and then tile on the cheese followed by the tomato slices. Sprinkle the bacon over the top. Step four, shimmy the dough from the peel to the hot baking stone or transfer the baking sheet to the oven. Step 5. Bake until the, cus the crust is golden and the cheese begins to brown in spots, about 6 to 8 minutes on the baking stone, or 10 to 15 minutes on the baking sheet. Step 6. Remove the pizza from the oven and let it rest for 5 minutes, then sprinkle with a pinch of salt. Step 7. Scoop the mayonnaise into a resealable plastic bag and snip off the tip in the bottom corner. Step 8. Pipe the mayo in a zigzag pattern over the pizza and scatter the lettuce over the top of it. Slice and serve. Did you know, according to a report published by the USDA in 2014, about 13% of Americans eat pizza on any given day? That's more than 41 million people, dudes. But this has been your pizza for the day, the BLT pizza. Cowabunga, dudes! Thank you for listening to the Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. This podcast has no affiliation with Eastman, Laird, Mirage Studios, IDW Studios, Archie Comics, or Nickelodeon Studios. This podcast is a member of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Check out thedorkening.com for other podcasts. Epic Tales from the Sewers is recorded by Justin Cooper and Eric Will. <laughs>Hi, this is Francois Chow. I am the Shredder from Secret of the Ooze. And uh, it's been a pleasure for me to talk to Justin and Eric on Epic Tales from the Sewers. It's been great, guys. Hi, this is Adam, a.k.a. Casey Jones from Casey Jones Livewire. And you're listening to Epic Tales from the Sewers. Time for a knuckle sandwich, punk. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. 
Do you have a hankering for horror knowledge? We have such sights to show you. Do you require raging retro reviews? Do you desire discussions with devastatingly dashing dorks? Do you have a free the Dorkening Podcast Network has nearly 30 shows to satisfy all of your nerdy, geeky, and dorky needs, from horror reviews and celebrity interviews. Hi, I'm Adam Green, the director of the Hatchet Films and the star of Allison. Hi, this is Dominic Pace, who played the bounty hunter Gecko from The Mandalorian. Hi, I'm Mike Price. I'm a writer on The Simpsons. I co-created Epis for Family. Hi, guys. This is Dee Wallace from E.T. and Cujo. Hi, my name is Kurando Mitsutake, director of Gun Woman and Karate Kill. Hi, this is Samantha Newark, the voice of Jem and Jerrica from the original Jem and the Holograms cartoon series. As well as nostalgic trips into the past, pop culture, the latest in entertainment news, and so much more. Featuring a variety of shows and hosts that will simultaneously enrage, enlighten, and entertain you. Check out the Dorkening Podcast Network. My mom says I'm cool. Available on iTunes, Spotify, thedorkening.com, and wherever fine podcasts can be found. Greetings! We are the Retro Reductopus Cephala Podcast, the bi-weekly show that celebrates all the things that made growing up awesome. He's right. We wax philosophic about lots of geeky crap like old video games and movies, toys, cartoons, I don't know, help me out here. Music. Pants. Quoting video games that don't have dialogues. Shabibans. Tasty news. Unnecessarily long Japanese onomatopoeia. Butt breathers. Uncomfortable nature facts. Or how to install a samoplage. And unlike all those other podcasts, we at Retro Octopus have an exciting rotating host schedule. Do we? We sure do. So, if you didn't like the guy flapping his gums this week, like me, worry not, gentle listener. Next week, we'll have a whole new host. A problem. Hey, they might still suck, but they'll suck differently. And you know what's really cool? Retro Octopus is part of the Dorkening and Inebriar Podcast Networks with new episodes every Tentacle Tuesday. Which is like every other Tuesday. We named it. Anyways, you can listen to us at iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, or any podcast player cool enough to carry the only show that celebrates all things that make growing up awesome. 